guys, Tevol here with a, well, the first episode in uh, Let's Play European of Solace 3. I'm playing Death and Taxes, which is, by the way, an excellent mod that I recommend it. It basically makes sliders impact things a lot more and just changes things generally in the game. Now, I'm not going to be starting at right the start in 1356. I'm going to be starting all the way. 1510 because I am playing Persia. Now you'll notice before 1510 it's Ak is extremely powerful and you know I, I, I like to play Persia without getting kicked within the first few minutes of gameplay because I don't thought it would be fun. So I'm going to start in 1510. Now, Persia is called Iran now. It was called Persia until quite recently, really. So yeah, the options are pretty much the same, except for difficulty. And I'm changing the difficulty because I am not very good at this game. I am really not very good. My strategies are about as effective as a dead stone. So let's start and see what happens. So I'm going to be starting with default settings because always war, I don't even know what that is, and auto build brings up pop ups constantly. So default settings are fine. So of course we got our first mission. In the name of Allah, you must improve the fences in Gergen. So we'll need to find Gergen. By the way, I'll mostly be playing in political map mode because it makes the map nice and colourful and shiny. And also, it's much easier to find countries and you're not looking around little green areas. For example, in Germany, which is the place that agitates my OCD the most because it broken into about 100 different colours. You could never find specific German states in uh, terrain map mode, so it's much easier to play in political map mode. So we need to find Gergen, I think it was called Gergen? Yeah, it was Gergen. There we are. So we already have troops stationed there, and it borders it borders the Shea Banid, which are a Karganate, which means they're quite likely to declare war on me like most of the Middle East. So, of course it's only natural that people bordering this would want defences. So, to build a defence, it's very simple. Just do that. Now that'll take a year to build, so we can focus our efforts on other more important things. No. You can see straight off the bath, I can change my slider. So, since I'm a religious government, a theocracy, rule through God, I don't think being innovative is the best decision, especially since I'm also limited. So, I'm going to slide one towards an arrow minded. Now, it could end badly, could have heresy or disorder, or a holy man could arrive, which is positive because I get a good advisor which I have specific and exclusive rights to for a certain number of years. So we slide one towards and we get heresy. So the people of Makran, as you can see, have changed their religion from Shiite Islam, which is the religion of Persia, to Sunni Islam. So, we'll need to convert them now. To convert, we need missionaries and we don't have any at the minute. And we only get 0 0.37 a year, which is very useful. So, to rectify that, we can get rid of military drill. Because it does take a long time, lo a lot longer to recruit regiments. Where I want very fast regiment recruitment because I need to sweep across. Uh, this part of the Middle East here, 
I'd like to conquer the shape on it. And I'd also like to expand into North Africa. And possibly the Ottomans and some of Eastern Europe. But, you know, I'd need to westernise to even be slightly competent against the likes of France and Spain, Britain, you know, Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Austria. So, yeah, that's one of my bigger goals is to westernise and expand into Europe. So I'm going to change military drill and instead replace it with divine supremacy which gives me more missionaries each year. But this will actually decrease our stability so actually I'm not sure if that's a good idea yet at least. No, I'll leave it for now. That was a silly idea. We have a free advisor slot. So we want land tech because we want a strong standing army so I guess we want Ismail Fatimi who is only three stars but is not as expensive as Muhammad Ali Fatimi and who is not actually very useful to what I want at the minute so I'm going to recruit this guy instead now we have a pr national decision to pass an anti-piracy act which will reduce our infamy but decrease our infamy limit. And that's another thing that I've changed in the settings is bad boy. Only to make it easier for myself because I suck at EU3 and I apologise in advance if it seems too easy. So we've increased the penalties severely for the act of committing piracy. Now we can upgrade our unit types from Muslim cavalry to Shaybanid cavalry should make our land armies a lot more competent. Bend against the shape on it. We need to build up our forces around the border. Now, as you can see, I'm currently losing money per month. So I guess one of the best ways to rectify this would be to move my armies to the border, well not all of them, because I'll need some western defence against uh, the Mamluks and possibly Georgia. Now, of course, I can attack the Shaybani straight away. They have no allies, they have no religious sort of protectorate guaranteeing the independence but I have no allies either but I can ally myself with the no guy and Kazakh and if I call them into a war they can attack from the north I guess I want to take as much land off the Shade Banid as humanly possible, otherwise they'll become extremely dangerous. So Kazakh and Nogai are now allied with us, and I'm moving my army towards um, Yazd in preparation. Apologies by the way for the choppy gameplay, Just video recording stuff takes quite a bit of CPU, my computer's not the best in the world. So once all my armies reach the destination, I'll attack the Shea Bannon. Now another thing as well, oh, we have a new Ayatollah to rule our glorious nation. Got actually quite high stats, except military, which is quite distressing. You can see the Ottomans here are, well, this past the, um, past Constantinople, the Ottomans are actually completely occupied by rebels, which makes me think, if they don't, if they don't deal with it, a new nation could actually form. I'm not sure what nation it is, but we'll see what time does. See, as usual, France is not actually still one country. And Castile owns some of Northern Africa.
I will be playing in quite high speed for a lot of the time because I'm very impatient. So I think we're ready to attack. They show you Barnard now. Oh! Well, actually, they've made a very quick alliance with the Mamluks and Morocco. If I can attack the Shaybanic quick enough, I can avoid a war with the Egyptians or the Mamluks or whatever. So, the Mamluks and Morocco have joined in on the Shaybanid side. Kazakh has joined in on my side and Nogai has refused. I think the way colonising a cargo net works is that you simply occupy the territory and send colonists. I'm not entirely sure though. I no, no, that's Golden Horde. That happens for. Ah, uh, the Mamluks are sending their armies over. I might recruit some mercenaries, it will drive me into a lot of debt, I suppose, but I need to defend. As I said earlier, I am actually awful at EU3. Sort all of this out behind the scenes because I doubt you want to watch very slow, choppy gameplay of armies fighting each other. And I will show you the results in the next episode. Uh, thank you for watching. If you'd like to, subscribe, uh, like, and comment on the video. That would be great. It helps me a lot. Uh, thank you.